Okay, so getting on really well down in here. Um, I've made one small uh, mess up, cock up, whichever you want to call it, uh, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So first off, here's that cockpit we left you with. Uh, as you can see down here, the little panels looking really nice. And you see that get that glazed look in the in the cockpit. You catch it there. It's one of those things that okay, probably no one will see it because it's going to be buried in a cockpit. But it's just one of those nice little details from a personal point of view. I like to see. Uh, sometimes you look at people's photo etch, mainly on the bigger stuff. If you're honest, but you look at them and you're thinking beautiful detail but it's just missing something and I think that's what it is if it has that sort of glazed look to it it gives it that extra dimension that extra little bit of depth and it takes technically flat photo etch and gives it that three-dimensional look so I think it's just one of those jobs where okay it's a two-minute job but actually makes a lot of difference even if you want to do it afterwards and come in with a little bit of um uh, PVA glue or a clear glue on a, like a, a cocktail stick and just dab each particular dial just so when it dries back it comes through but I think it looks really great and it's a if you catch it in the light sometimes it's just that little bit of something and don't forget I think with this entire hobby and scale modeling as a whole the difference between us and like the die cast guys and the mahogany type guys don't get me wrong I think there are art forms in their own right but it's the level of detail and it's just all of these little things where it's lots of little tiny details that make a big picture. It's a bit like if you take a normal tank, you know, a die cast tank, okay, you can put it on the best diorama you like, it's not going to look any good, okay, because it needs to fit into its environment totally. So it needs to be that sort of the same tones right the way through, the same flatness, the same glossiness, or whatever it is. And I'm a great believer in that. So by having lots of little tiny details throughout your model, it just gives it that sort of a more immersive look, okay? So that's what we're trying to achieve. But basically, they're all done. Now, as far as the cock up goes, is I've used the wrong grey. Yes, um, it was only when I come to do the dry brushing on this, I'm suddenly thinking, that's my dry brushing colour. But it's very difficult to know because looking at the references, that looks pretty good. And I think by the time we sort of, you know, we, we get in there uh, and we do dry brush it, I don't think anyone's going to notice. So again, it's just one of those things. Beat yourself up about it like next time. Make sure you check your references. Don't go piling in like I did. I know what it was, is that I've moved all my paints around and I grabbed it and it was the wrong one. So, but as you can see, it doesn't look too far out. I'm quite happy literally what we've got here and everything else. Now I'm looking how this is going to go together. And as you might notice, you've got this great cockpit and you think, okay, you're gonna put this in like this. But oh no, you see, because this entire cockpit situation goes into this tub, okay? Which, you know, you think, okay, right. That's a, a little bit weird. So literally two parts of detail on this particular build, mainly being, the external detail all down in here and this internal detail in here is somewhat going to be lost. Yes, you could technically see it from underneath and all the rest of it, but it's not going to be one of those things I think the layman is ever going to see. But, you know, it's in there now and everything else. But generally, it's in. But what we need to do is just liven it up a little bit. So, usual thing for this one, what we're going to do, we'll get that out, is we're going to dry brush it. Now, because I've messed up slightly with the actual grey that we've used, I'm going to come in there with basically something like a Tamiya XF54. Uh, it's quite going to be a stark contrast, but again, I'm doing this thing of almost um, theatre. So to be able to see the little details, we're going to need to make them pop a little bit more. So it is a little bit strong. You might want to go with a darker shade. We'll see how it is. If it looks a little bit too strong, what we'll do is when we get to wash, we'll give it a couple of coats of wash to knock it back. But I think we'll be okay by the time we get in here and pop this in. So usual way of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upturn a pot. We'll find a nice dry brushing brush that has got filler all over it still. Ideally, we want to lose the filler. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'll tell you what we'll do it this way. We're going to put in a couple of drops, just a smidgen, down in the bottom of airbrush cleaner. Now, the reason for using the airbrush cleaner, uh, as we spoke about before, is to literally make this flow better. Now, airbrush cleaner, the great thing about it is it's got little things in amongst it which help um, basically airbrushes lubricate and all those things which from our point of view is brilliant because what that enables us to do then is to use that to help it not dry as much so with acrylics when you're using them for dry brushing what can happen is you can get that grittiness and graininess to it and things like that by doing it this way what will happen is it'll physically stop that okay so you just get a smoother thing also you notice your dry brush will go a lot further so usual thing load up a brush squish it down brush it out then we load up properly don't take it from the original obviously okay just the tip in there just the tip okay give it a bit of a rub 
okay and then we can come in so we'll start on the inside so we've got some little boxes and that we're going to hand pick these out again in a moment but for the moment we are just literally just running around and again like we said before dry brushing is not a sprint it's definitely a marathon okay so what you're trying to do is just passing over things just to go up but you might notice how we're brushing the sides of the panels as well we did come in and add a little bit more riveting in here so the idea is it's just going to give some different shades and also what it will do is just lighten this all up okay and hopefully you can see how it's just starting to work okay so just go a bit more load it up what happens is you, this will act like a wet palette shortly okay so again but it's very light little strokes and you're just going to slowly build everything up and it's tiny little thin layers which is great because it'll enable it to all come up okay and it'll be one of these things you'll be doing it and you're thinking it's not doing anything this is wasting my time but honestly it's one of those things when you show a before and after you'll be good okay just don't over rub it because again the paint's quite thin but when you show it on a side by side hopefully you can see how it's beginning to lighten it okay so we're just going to come in here And this is just a weathering effect as well. It's not just catching on the edges. You're putting it on the flat edges too. Okay. So we do that. I don't think we're going to see it here for one moment, but you never know. Okay, we'll just let all that dry back on there okay <clears throat> and then obviously down in the cockpit as well so some heavy feet scuffing on the inside don't be frightened to go over your your actual uh, cockpit instruments as well if you want to it won't change anything on one pass and what it'll do when this dries back, it'll give a sort of dusty look just into everything, okay? So, another way of describing this is like washing and dry brushing all in one, okay? So, we're just going to pop a little bit just around in here. And then, same in the rear cockpit, a bit over the floor side panels, just up on the sides, and what we're going to do is just going to pop around with some hard work as well, okay, so that's on there just a little bit, just around in here, this technically is going to be a couple of different colours but for the moment we're just trying to keep everything very natural and together right the way through, okay. That one, do we do that one? I can't remember. Last bit if we haven't. <clears throat> okay, in both directions. Okay. So, same time, to be honest, we've done the seats. Now, the back cushions, nice little colour for this one, is using the whole red, uh, which is XF9 Tamiya, and it gives you this cushion. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a smidging of this just around in here just to give it some little bit of contrast got to be a bit careful because to be honest I only painted this a short while ago but it's just going to fade out the bottom just a little bit this will be the last bit because it's the last bit I've got okay then what I'm going to do is just pop it over one of the cushions at the back. The idea is just to give this a bit of texture. Now that should dry back really, really smudgy. Okay, I'd say on camera it's not looking exactly brilliant, but trust me, it'll look faded and worn and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do one with, one without. 
Okay, so that's had the the sort of very soft one to it. Now we're just going to come in with some standard dry brushing just in a few little areas. So again, we're just going to pick our brush. We're just going to grab our paint. Okay. So this is important to get it all off the brush now because this isn't going to be as forgiving as what we just had. Okay. So this has got proper paint on it almost. And now we can just dance this and just flick it over the areas where we want it to catch just to give us a little bit more depth and texture. Okay. So it is that thing. And again, when you're comparing like for like, you can probably see how, what's happening now. We're sort of fading, dusting, giving it a worn look. And don't forget, the more you've got off of your, your brush, the better, because what that enables you to do is rub harder Okay, so just as the paint starts to wear off and it's not doing much at all, you can come in a bit more, Let's grab a bit more. Okay, then we can just run around in here as well. Let's grab a tiny bit more. So, again, just a, some light scratches around the front. And then what we're going to do in the same fashion as we always do, we're going to pop along with a little bit of metalizer afterwards just to physically scratch this up. Okay, just a little bit around this edge. And it's just to give a metal look as well. It's going to give a high contrast. And then just the last bit down in this cockpit. Okay. A little bit just around pedals, boxes, edges. Not so much on the um, instrument panels on this because it'll be too dark. Just on all edges and things. Is this thing of literally you're just working everything just to fade in because in a minute we're going to wash it and then when we wash it we'll be back to square one because it will darken everything so we're just allowing for this effect okay but all we're trying to do is just to make things pop as I said the down in here I don't think we're going to see this for a minute but hey ho Too much straight and no too much. You can see we've got brush marks, but hopefully we'll be able to brush them out. Okay, so you can see what we're trying to do. We're just trying to wear, blend down and everything on this one. We're not trying to cause massive amounts of, of work and that, but we're just trying to blend in. Okay, literally just like that. Okay, so the next level is we're just going to come in with this with a little bit of a metal rub. Now the whole point of this metal rub, it just makes everything look like metal. Now I've got to find my brush for this. Okay, so what we have is a very old brush. You can see it's quite dark. So then what we're going to do is we've got some uh, buffing ones. This is dark iron, which is 214. Okay, then all we're going to do is we are going to grab a tiny bit onto the brush literally like this. Okay, we are loading up this brush. All right, and then we can take it over and we're gonna get rid of all of this until the brush starts to look shiny. Because actually what we're doing, we're after the buffing side. Now you don't wanna come in with a silver or anything else like that because otherwise what's gonna happen is it's gonna look too strong. But if we show you down on here, so on this big bit here, we're just going to brush this over and what happens is you can see how it darkens but also see how it catches in the light now and this is the buffable bit doing its thing okay but the great thing is if you rub it very lightly over the surface 
You can see what we're doing. We're causing sheen and shine, and this is that three-dimensional depth we're talking about. And this is something I've been playing with for absolute years, that perhaps instead of using a flat coat, there's other ways of doing it to give a more realistic look. And this is what I'm trying to get. So this would be your more sort of, you know, nice and warm, where it's just reflecting. So it's a more of a glossy surface, but we're cheating by giving it a very faint silver coat right the way over it. But the whole point is, again, when you catch it in the light, it will show through. So we're gonna do the same on these inside. Now you don't need tons of this, and you don't wanna be going in forever, because otherwise you're gonna end up with a nice piece of metal. But you're just trying to inflict just little bits of uh, shininess into everything okay and then that way hopefully what happened now you can see the difference you've got that dusty look but actually it's got a hint of a shine to it and that's all we're trying to do here okay so we'll just reload you know and if you wanted to you could actually do it with your finger pop it on your finger and the usual thing first couple of passes just be very ginger with it then what we're going to do, let this totally cure, I'm going to pop around here with a wash as well, just to knock everything back. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. Alright, so down in here, in the cockpit, you might notice it's looking very particularly dusty and, and not nice. And then hopefully, by the time we've been around this, we'll get that nice blend of everything. There we go, you can see that floor, how it's going shiny now, and it has that sort of realistic polished paint look. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, so... We're not trying to silver things like dry brushing silver to get silver edges. We're actually just trying to make texture. Okay, so some of these over here. So the whole point is it all sort of works together. So again, we're going to polish down in here. So think of it more like polishing. And also it's really fun and you can't really go wrong. So. This is one of those techniques where you can just keep going at it and you'll be absolutely fine, okay? It's very difficult to get this wrong. Okay, so you can see what we've done now. Remember it was really flat and horrible, but now we've actually got some nice shininess coming into it. So what we're going to do is pop around everywhere with that. So we're going to come in here with this seat areas just on the outside and it just gives it the look of polished painted metal rather than plastic so it's just that thing you're just giving depth with different layers and with each layer we do this you end up with something a little bit different okay see how we're doing it just on the back of that seat Okay, you can see that we've gone for that sort of worn down seat look now on this one. So one nice, one rubbish. Again, each model should tell a tale. So mine, he's had a new seat cushion at the back. Okay, last few bits. So we've just got these up here. I think the great thing as well doing this little technique is that it gives everything such a more heavy weighted look. Okay, you hardly need any for this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is because I think we've got too much on the brush, I'm just doing the underside first. Okay, so that's good. Again, this is just the same. So you're just trying to give that a look of painted metal. Okay, like that, you can see? There we go, that is literally it, as simple as that. So what we're gonna do for the last step of this particular one, we are just gonna make up a very simple oil wash. So we're literally just using a tiny little bit of oil. 
Okay, so we'll be using the old 502s a smidgen, and when we say a smidgen, we really mean a smidgen. Okay, and then what we're going to do is then just pop it around all in here, picking out all the little details, and then if you wanted to, you could come in with like a dusty type of wash and put it in some of the cracks and some of the various areas and stuff like that. But before we do that, I think it's probably going to be good practice to pop this guy together so we can actually get in there. So with the oils and that, they're going to work and flow around lines and joints and everything else like that. So what we're going to do is get this cockpit put together. There's a few other things I've still got to do. Uh, we've got the uh, little circuit breaker panel, things like that. This guy here, that needs to have a few little uh, photo etch parts put in there. There's a couple more photo etch ones, got to go all over this. And then we'll get it put together, and then we can think about moving on to the front gun. Okay, so we're pushing along very, very nicely. Let me just show you where we're to. So, as you can see, just down in here, we've got the actual uh, cockpit tub installed. Again, needs a little bit of fiddling around, but hopefully, as you can see, we've actually uh, got the instrument panel installed, and again, looking great. It is that thing, if you're like me, uh, a little bit of the old sausage fingers and uh, got the shapes and everything, trying to do that detail painting. To be honest, those days have long left me. So um, yeah, from that point of view, I think it uh, is well worth a little bit of investment just to put in some of the uh, color photo etch sets that you can see down in there. It automatically gives it just so much more detail than out. Now, fair play, if you're uh, you know an accomplished little painter and you can get in there and do all of that, then uh, hats off to you. But to me, I'll take the easy route and we'll pop down and pop all that in like that. So you can see the actual tub's gone on the side. We've got this front part put in now which actually makes it up and we've glued this one into place again it's not nice as you can see it's a little bit you know around and trying to cram this in it doesn't really want to go but don't forget it's all about the interior not so much the outside we're not going to see this we've got this top deck area which is going to come along and it's going to fit in here and it's going to hide most of the the details away but we will be able to see in there just enough remember it has got that flip top lid uh, to be able to see so there we go that's that done still needs a wash but i want to get a few other parts in there before we get going with that now one of the big things is seat belts harnesses i think they're a great way of just adding uh, and livening up detail to cockpits again it is that thing yes you can get them and you put your seat in and you can do all the detail work but if you haven't got harnesses you're just missing out on so much detail and the other thing as well when you look into a cockpit you always see the seat so putting some harnesses down in there i think really is the best way to go about it now you've got various options to do this one you can go down the thing by a replacement seat which has molded in harnesses they're a nice touch but this particular kit there's nothing about uh, available for that at the moment so your other options is to go through uh, and make some so we've got great tutorials on the site and did a beautiful one about using tamiya tape making up his own buckles to make up harnesses okay so you can go down that route the other route we've done before and um, we've shown them in various videos different ways of doing it but we've done milliput strips so by taking actually a little bit of some putty cutting it into strips, letting it dry a little bit, then you can manipulate and bend it all into place and then paint it, good to go. That's a great way of doing it, okay? Other way is to actually just use a simple lead wire. So you have a lead wire, flatten it, paint it, put that in, works equally as well, because you can bend it. So it's a nice sort of malleable way of making up sort of that clump down harnesses where they're all just sitting in the, the actual seat area itself. Or you can cheat and do what I do, which is to buy a photo etch set. Now, the two flavours of photo etch that have come out recently. We've got this guy down in here, which is, to be honest, from a totally different aircraft. This is from when we was doing the 190. Uh, we went down the fabric route, but this is the normal uh, photo etch, colour photo etch harness set. So, as you can see down in here, you've got the actual strips, and then you've actually got the buckles and things, and you have to bend them around. Now, the drawback to this is, these are literally just printed onto the actual metal. Now, that trouble means, when you go around to bend these in and get them in, they can actually lift tear and peel okay so in some ways i've never been a particular fan of them they're not as easy to go through as there is so the other option is to do the new way of doing it which you might be able to see these little guys down in here which are actually steel uh, ones now the difference between these steel ones is you might see all of these parts down on here have actually printed in these are just flat photo etch okay so when you look at it like this as you can see on the blind side again unfortunately they still don't double print them but as you can see all of these details it is just one piece so you don't have to bend them around and do them all and also it's got shadowing naturally and everything else on there which actually gives a very good realistic appearance now do i think they're as good as fabric ones no. Okay, when we did things like the FW190, we did the great one, we used the HDW um, fabric sets and used the metal with those. 
you can go in, uh, you can soften the fabric, you get a very natural look with them, and I think they look really, really nice, especially if you give them a little bit of wash and things like that. But for smaller scales, they are so fiddly to do, I would stick. So I would probably only use the fabric ones in, to be honest, the 132nd, 124th scale stuff. For 48th, 72nd, and well, if you really are clever, 144 stuff, uh, I would actually highly recommend going down something like these. And these ones, again, because you don't have to do that tiny little fiddly job of actually making up harnesses, these are beautiful. So I really are liking this new style of doing it. So we have them all here, so we've actually got it in. So usual thing, we've got a little bit of uh, super glue because obviously it is a, a metal part. Okay, so we're just going to grab, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pre-glue where the harnesses go just down to the inside. Okay, so usual thing, uh, the less glue you use, the better. Okay, so we're going to use this guy first. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I've placed on the other one, then the other way, this one, we're going to do this way around. Okay, so we're just going to... Put that down in there. Again, to be honest, I've put in a little bit too much glue. So we've got a bit in there, and then we're just going to overcoat it. So we've just got it hanging there like that. And what we're going to do is going to re glue the other side because it's probably gone off by now. A little bit down there. And then this guy, we're just going to come in. We're just going to put it in like so. Okay, so we've got two totally different angles because we're going to have like a, a swooshy type thing. But you can see it looks very flat and you can't really see it. Okay, and they're there. But don't worry, we're going to bend them all around in a moment. Then we're just going to take a couple little splodges of glue at the top here. Now making sure you get your left and right. There is a very slight difference down here at the bottom. It toes inwards. But again, we don't want these to be flat down the front. So we're just going to angle them probably around about five degrees off. Okay, let's grab my tweezers. We just want, we don't want him lying down yet because we want him to bend. So we're just going to sit him on here just a second just for it to start to bite. When it bites him, we can maneuver off. Again, slightly my fault this because glues off so we want a slight angle so when it bends down they're not just laying flat towards each other okay so we're just gonna grab try and grab there we go this one so we're getting slightly off angle just so it's in like a V and then again, we're just going to tap this down. Now these do have tiny little bits of photo etch which actually hook over and make a loop over the top of these. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about that. That's far too small. So what I'm going to do is just going to put a double super glue just down on top of these areas. It's just to give it extra strength because we are going to bend it and we don't want it to ping off. Okay, so there we go. That just sits on there like that. And then what you want to do is let that totally dry off. Okay, once that's totally dried off, you'll end up with something like this guy, which we've done a little bit earlier. Okay, so he's drying everything. So then what you're going to try and do is bend this around. Now, to start with, as you can see, we've put these on the other direction just so they're going to be a little bit odd to each other. And this is why we've used quite a, a bit of glue down in there. So what we want to do is slightly twist this. And what we're going to have to do is probably repaint but we want to twist this and then, to be honest, we're going to slightly all bend and flatten it down. It's just so it looks very natural as it's sitting down in there. But you want the bends to be quite natural, okay? So then again, on this guy, we're just going to bend it over. And then again, we can just pop this in few little bends just down in there. Now you could obviously glue it down in position if you wanted to. And then the same with these. So again, I'm not grabbing it and just pushing it down. We are wanting it to sort of curl and bend and, and everything else like that. So, and then again. 
So it just makes a sort of clump of harnesses all down here at the bottom, okay? Okay, then once you're in, you give a little bit of a nudge, and then you've ended up something like this, which I think is really, really nice. Okay, now again, it's gonna have a wash in a minute, so it will darken these down, but I think the weather in them is absolutely superb. So this is our darker seat. So we're pretending this is gonna be the real one of the two. And then obviously I assume this just comes in and then it will have to push slightly back and in. It actually goes to the rear frame work like this rather than sticking on the floor okay but there we go that fits in there like that which I hope you agree really livens it up makes it look so much better than if you just had a seat in there or anything else but I think the detail on that is absolutely brilliant okay so that really is very very nice so what I'm going to do I'm going to do the other one exactly the same pop that in and then before we put this second half on there, what we'll do is we'll do the wash for it, making sure that's all okay. And if that's done, then we can put the other side onto it, sandwich it all up together, put it off to one side, and then we'll get on with that gun.